So on my new rig strips for the RigMate Pro, one of the most popular patterns that I've been asked for is for my F1 soft pellet rig. So this is often something I'd use during the winter and it's slightly different to probably how I shot for every other bait. So it's really important that we did a, you know, a separate strip just for that particular bait. Cause like I say, the shotting pattern is a little bit different now. Starting with the components, what you're gonna to need to tie this rig. The float that I always use for that sort of fishing is a RW Dink float. Now this has got a 1.5 mil bristle, which is the thinner bristle that Richie sells. Now, you know, winter time, you need that little bit of sensitivity. And often you tend to find with pellets that the bites are very, very small. And now this lends itself to the shotting pattern that I'm gonna show you. It's about magnifying the bite. So having a 1.5 mil bristle, a little bit thinner, really, really important. So that's also got a wire stem. Again, soft pellets are such a light bait. It's not a lot of weight to sort of hold your rig still. So you need that wire stem in the float to keep everything nice and still. So really, really important. So that's that flexi wire as well. So still nice and strong. So like I say, that's the float. In this case, I've got a 4x12. I normally use, again, anything from a 4x12, 4x14, and a 4x16. Now, on this rig strip, what I've got here, it shows sort of the shotting pattern that I've got, but also on the finished rig strips, it'll tell you exactly how many shots to put on for each different size of the float. So it gives you all that information, and it makes it dead easy. You can just put it on, go in, and it'll be sat there perfect on the bank. So line-wise, tells you on the rig strip, you want 015 engage line. Now again, winter time, a little bit thinner line, just helps with your presentation. Again, I'm talking about trying to keep everything nice and still, and I just find cutting your main line down stops any sort of drift in any wind or anything like that. Just just tends to work a lot better. So 015 is perfect. Often as well, when you're fishing with pellets, you can catch some decent fish. You often up a few carp, so you can't go too light. I just think 015 is perfect. So. I'm going to put that onto the rig, mate. Secure it in place. Making hard work of it, but we're on. Just unravel that line just so I've got plenty of line to play with. Now, again, like I always do, because I'm always using quite fine silicon, I just make sure I give it a cut with a sharp pair of scissors. And that just gives me, you know, a nice sharp end so when i'm pushing it through the silicon it goes through no bother that's really really important i'm just going to thread the float onto the line now on these floats it's got a quite a fine flexi wire stem so you do need some nice fine silicon and also like i was touching on is about the presentation of my float i believe that real fine silicon gives you that better presentation of your float your float sits better you don't get any a situation where your float's holding up or anything like that so i always use the thinnest silicon i can get away with which this is the guru 0.3 micro silicon which is actually your hook silicon but i just always use that on all my delicate rigs and it works really well so that's the actual silicon there um, and it's just the one that i always tend to use for all my winter rigs so i'm just going to cut three pieces of silicon Again, I think this is even more important when you're using a wire stem float that you put plenty of silicon on. So cut two pieces about five or six mil, and one sort of 10, 11 mil. That's just about right. So I'm gonna thread silicon onto the line. Like you see with that sharp, you know, where I've cut the end of the line, it goes through no bother. So three pieces of silicon on. I'm just going to thread that onto the float. Again, a little bit fiddly to get onto the float, this silicone, but again, once it's on, because it's nice and tight on the float, you'll never have it, you know, coming off and having to re-thread it on. Once it's on, it's in place. So just slide that up. Tend to find these uh, flexi wire stems are quite slippery. It makes it quite hard to sort of get your silicone. But we're getting there. Now again, one thing I think is really important with your silicone is sort of the placement that you put it on the float. Now, 
again, as I've always touched on about me plumbing up, I tend to try and plumb up so that I've got sort of just over a body over depth, and that tends to be about two inches of line on the bottom, and I find that's perfect for good presentation. So I just sort of have that top piece of silicon sort of two inches down from the top of the float, and then the next piece of silicon sort of halfway in between, and the bottom piece of silicon is just overhanging at the bottom. That just works perfectly. I'm just gonna slide my float up. And now what I'm gonna do, tie a loop in the end of the rig so I can attach it to my rig mate. I always use a census easy loop for that. Just find that makes you know the quickest and strongest knot. You can use all sorts of different loop ties, but that's the one I always use. So I'm just tie that knot, ties it nice and quick. And I'm just gonna trim the tag end down, leave a couple of mil. I'll just need to peel out a bit more line so that I can attach it onto the pin at the end of the rig, mate. Now, as I was touching on with this rig, it's quite a little bit different to all my other rigs. Now, what I tend to use for most of me fishing is bulk and dropper style shotting patterns. I just find that gives the most versatile presentation in terms of being able to get the rig down nice and quick if I want to and be fishing on the bottom and getting it down and being positive. And I've also got that little bit of a fall at the end of the rig where I can flick it out, hold on to it, and it gives a slow fall. And I just find that's the best presentation. Now, the problem is with that sort of shotting pattern when you're fishing for sort of F1s and skimmers when you're fishing with soft pellets is you can find that it doesn't register the bites as well. It's not as positive in the bottom end as you'd want it for this sort of style of fishing. So I do use a slightly different presentation with this. So basically it's just like a strung out bulk of decent size shot, big shot. Now, usually on a 4 by 12 you might use 11s and 10s. But on my pellet rigs, I'd rather use slightly less shot and use number nines, get them nice and down in the bottom end of the rig, and that just shows the bites up. So if you have a look at this, you just see you've got a sort of, you know, a three or four centimetre spaced um, number nines. And on the 4B12, it takes five of them. So I'm just going to mark it on me line using a Sharpie pen. So I've got, there you go, five number nines marked out. Now, on my rig mate here at the front, I've got all my shot in the tubs already. So I've got the number nines there. These are Balabini shot. I just put them in these tubs so it's nice and easy to access on my rig mate. And I'm just gonna start adding the shot on. So really positive again, you'll see it's completely different to say how you'd fish with maggots or you know even like worms and pinkies and other baits like that that you might use in the winter, even bread tend to use much more of a delicate shotting pattern the bulk's a lot further from the you know uh from the hook a lot smaller shot when you're fishing with soft pellets all about magnifying the bites now this 4 by 12 rig is sort of a rig that i'd use when i'm fishing sometimes in open water on shallower venues but generally sort of on snake lakes when i'm fishing up to islands with soft pellets i've also got the 414s and 416s that are often the ones that i use when i'm fishing sort of in open water situations so just put that last one on by taking the pin off and there you can see i've got nice strung out bulk everything's dead even perfect for you know, soft pellet fishing all the weights down in the bottom end again i'll attach to that short hook length generally four inches normally 011 013 engage f1 pellet or an lwg hook and that'll just show up the bites perfect so that's the rig done the only other thing that you might have to add sometimes you might have to add a little trimming shot a 13 or a 12 little micro cube or something like that just to dot that float down but generally i just add that on the bank normally with these floats five number nine shots that pretty much perfect so you know i'm just going to wrap that up on the winder and it'll pretty much be done when i get on the bank so again this float like i touched on 4b12 probably three and a half foot maximum maybe 
So there's no point doing loads and loads of winds on this winder. So I'm only going to do about eight turns around the winder and that'll be plenty for this float. So I'm just going to count them on. Two. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. Again, I'm just going to tie a nice big loop at the top. Making hard work of that again. Well, got it. But I just tie a nice big loop at the top, and all that allows me to do is attach it onto the winder nice and easily. If I use tie a little tiny loop with me loop tie, you can find it hard to get it onto the top of the winder. So it just fits over the top just like that. And that's me soft pellet rig. Really, really simple again, as all my rigs are, tend to be nice and simple shotting patterns, but just thinking carefully about what you're trying to achieve. With this rig, it's all about getting it down, keeping everything tight down the bottom end, shot nice and close to the hook, big shot to register them bites off sort of shy biting fish, F1s and skimmers in the winter time. So that's my soft pellet rig on the rig strip on the Rig Mate Pro.